Hello loves, it's me Ro. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about a fun topic called, well it's not called anything. Today we're going to be talking about the special jelly that you can only get in jail or prison, but Adam and I call it the jail jelly. And you can't get it in the chow hall where they all go to eat. So if you're interested in jail jelly, why it's magic jelly as we call it, what it is, where you get it, how you get it, please keep watching. If you are new here, my name is Ro. Welcome. I'm so glad you stumbled upon this video. If it's the first one you are watching, I'll tell you a little bit about me. My name is Ro. I am the founder of a nonprofit organization called Strong Prison Wives and Families. I am also the author of a book called The Comeback Code. I'll put a link to it up there. I have a loved one who was incarcerated for 20 years serving an unfair 213 year sentence, but here we don't glorify or glamorize prison life. We are trying to live above stigma. We are trying to beat statistics, find the silver lining, and get through this as unscathed as possible. I've been coaching prison wives and family members since 2012, and I've been told by so many of them that they would not be able to have gotten through their journey without me, which really is the most humbling thing. If you like this video or other videos on my channel, and you wanna see more of this pretty little face, make sure that you hit that subscribe button down below, give it a thumbs up, and ding that little notification bell if you wanna be notified every single time I post a new video, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and especially you need that bell turned on if you wanna be notified when I sometimes go live some days in between. Okay, enough of all that. Let's get to the real meat and potatoes, or in this instance, jelly, of this story. I used to have this friend, we will call her Jen, even though every time I give a fake name to one of my friends or somebody in a story because I'm trying to save their identity, I either one, accidentally call them by their real name and then have to bleep the whole thing out and all of that fun stuff, or I forget and I use the wrong fake name and it just makes a mess of the whole entire story. So let's not forget the name Jen here, okay? Work with me, stars align, universe, let's keep this thing going. I just filmed the whole Just Mercy review video. I don't know in what order I'm going to post these. I always post and edit out of order, but I'm like heavy and I have a little bit of a headache now and I'm trying to rush this. I'm about to go meet somebody to do an interview about my life as a prison wife and strong prison wives and families for her podcast. So <sighs> let's get this going. Why do I make weird noises for real? So anyway, I had this friend, we'll call her Jen. We were inseparable like this. Literally people would ask me, how's your other half? And they would mean my BFF at that time. And actually we were kind of more than just best friends. We would tell each other we were cousins because it was the easiest way to explain our relationship. Our mothers grew up together. They were best friends. It was three of them. The three of them were thicker than thieves, very, very, very good friends. Well, my friend Jen's mother and her father moved down, they all moved down to Georgia from New York where we were living and our parents lost touch. Well, when my parents moved to New Jersey, they were at a fair and my mother says to my father, oh my God, that lady looks just like Jen's mother, her best friend. And Jen's father just so happened to be standing in line behind them and heard that and he's like, that is her. And they started talking and they were like, oh my God, how long have I been seeing you in so many years? And they just so happened, small world, they moved back to the Northeast, but to New Jersey, not New York this time. And it just so happened to be 15 minutes from where my parents were. How weird is that? So they developed a relationship again. They became like this again. We would go to their house for holidays and they would come to our house for holidays and winds up I become best friends, thicker than thieves. Why is that my phrase for this video? With this girl, Jen. We were in our early 20s at that point. I was in my mid 20s. She was in her early 20s. So you meet guys out and they're like, oh, how do you guys know each other? And you're like, well, sit down. Our mothers were best friends. Da, 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 10 minutes later, no, we would just say we were cousins because I called her parents aunt and uncle because we were close like that. My friends, when I moved to the South, called those types of relationships Italian cousins because everybody who's Italian, no matter what, a respect thing, your parents' friends are usually aunt and uncle, so what else? Anyway, we were not blood related. We were as close as cousins though, and that's all you need to know for this story that I'm dragging out forever. 
you guys know the show, The Jersey Shore, right? Well, that's like a real thing that when you're young in Jersey, when you're in your going out years, early 20s to, I don't know, I knew people in their 50s that did this, but for me, it was early 20s to late 20s. I think I stopped at 30, but we would rent houses down the shore, which is just what we say for at the beach, it's our slang, and we would all get together and go out to all the bars and clubs and just be crazy, just like you see on the show, The Jersey Shore. So we were at the Jersey Shore at a place called Tiki Bar, which was attached to another place called Jenkinson's. Jenkinson's was the indoor club bar restaurant and Tiki Bar was the pier and that was outside. So we had a shore house that year with a very good guy friend that I went to high school with, Jen, her older sister, myself, and then a couple of those guys' friends. So we were hanging out and that one good guy friend of mine, his name is Scott. Scott's parents came down to hang out with us. I used to work out with Scott's mom and dad, so I knew them. We all worked out at the same gym, all from the same hometown, and we were all hanging out at the Tiki Bar, and this guy, is walking in, we're kind of at the end of the pier, maybe the middle end, sitting at the bar, all just hanging out. And this guy walks in at the very front of the pier. So he's probably, I don't know, half of this room's length away. And Scott's mom points him out. She said, girls, do you see the guy with all of those tattoos? He had PC prison tattoos all over him, it looks like. We're like, yeah, he was a big muscular bodybuilder guy. She said, Stay away from him. He's bad news. He used to work with my brother. He did some real dirt with him. He was really dishonest, robbed him of this money, this, that, the other thing. Stay away from him. So as he walks up, and my friend's back was to him when she's like, stay away from the guy with the tattoos. As he walks up and she sees him in her peripheral and she sees the muscles and she sees the, sees the tattoos, she melted. Game on because you couldn't tell us not to do something back then and when we saw a bad boy it was la so she falls madly in love with this guy at first sight later on that evening we go home to the shore house scott's mom and dad go back home up north to their regular house and scott says hey my friends have a house down the street you remember the bodybuilder guy he's in with them too <laughs> You want to know the irony of the story? The house was a whole bunch of correctional officers. <laughs> the irony. A whole bunch of correctional officers, this ex-con, and a girl. Scott kind of had a crush on this girl. He went back and forth between having a crush on me and this girl. And he knew I wouldn't date him, so he wanted to go hang out with this girl. He's like, do you guys want to come? And my friend's like, yeah, bro, driving me by the arm, we're coming. So I was also competing in fitness at that time, so I wasn't drinking. I was just not into any, I was just kind of like, Bleh, whatever. So we go and she disappears upstairs with the tattoo guy. And I remember I'm sitting on the couch. It was me, Scott, and the other girl that he was kind of into. And she was really into him, but he was kind of more into me. And I remember him having my his arm around her, distracting her, and then trying to like, I don't know, put his arm around me or whatever. So I kind of got up and I was like, Jen, do you want to go? I'm going to leave now. And she was like, no, I'm good. She wound up staying with Tattoo Guy. After the summer, we all go back home. Her older sister starts a business with the bodybuilder guy. Jen still has this whole huge crush on him, but he's like, listen, he's like, I'm not a good person. I'm going to break your heart. It's, I can't date you. He still, they both really, really liked each other. And he would call us the wing nuts because the two of us together were like, doo -doo 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 -doo, like two little doofuses. As smart as we are, we were just doofuses when we were together. We were just naive young girls. And he loved it. He thought we were the cutest things ever because we were just two innocent, naive young girls that were just, he called us literally wing and nut. We were the wing nuts. We would see him all the time because he would be at her house because he ran a business with her older sister. Eventually, that fell apart. They lost touch. A couple of years go by. Jen and I would literally spend every single day together. After work, we would hang out and we would just go shopping. We would hang out in the car. We were smoking cigarettes. Just that was what we did. So eventually, she's like, do you remember the guy from the shore house with all the tattoos that was in business with my sister? I said, yeah. She's like, I don't know why he's been on my mind so much recently. I kind of want to try to reach out to him. So I said, okay, let's do it. And so we searched for him and we couldn't find him. And eventually she found him in county jail 
and she wrote him a letter. And it took a while, but he wrote back and they got back in touch. She started seeing him. And that's the person who I tell you guys my story in my video on the difference between jail visits and prison visits. And then also I tell you if visit rooms in person are like they are on TV. I talk about when I went to go see somebody at Essex County Jail, it was this guy. I'll post the video up there. So one time he calls her and they're having this conversation, right? And so I walked away because I always tried to give them privacy. I think we were in the mall or something thing. I walked away. I shopped. She went outside. We meet up again. We get in the car. We're going home. And she says, can I ask you a question? And I was like, yeah. I mean, we'd always bust each other's chops. We were just two like young, silly, fun girls. She said, what does it mean to you when somebody says jail preserves? And I said, oh, it's got to mean that there's some sort of jelly. And in my head, all I thought about was like jail shows when they show the green jello that they eat in jail. I'm like, is it some sort of lime flavored jelly or something? And she started laughing and she goes, that is 100% exactly what I said verbatim. And I was like, well, of course it was because we share a brain pretty much at this point in our innocent, naive wing and nut life. She started laughing really hard and she said, I was talking to Tattoo Guy last night and we were talking about how he doesn't have any bills. And I don't know if I said this part or if I made it very clear that he was in and out, in and out of prison his whole entire adult life. He was a heroin addict when he was younger. So it started when he was in juvie. And then when he was in jail, just like a lot of other people, he was taught how to be a better criminal. So then he just had a rap sheet of all different charges throughout his whole entire life. And I think he's out and doing better now, but we all lost touch. One thing that I remember so specifically is that, remember, we met at Shore Houses and all of us are Italian. I believe he was half Italian, half Irish. She was half Italian, half Irish, and I'm completely Italian. So we would always have tanning contests, mostly between the two of them, to see who could get the darkest, who could get the deepest tan. Is that not Snooky Jersey Shore-esque? I'm telling you, that show is kind of real. So, I mean, it's kind of stage two, but the characters and what they do, back what we did back then in our shore houses was kind of real gym tan laundry so they were talking about how they were going to have another tanning contest while he tanned on the yard at prison and she tanned outside because she wasn't working at that point at home and she would go to the shore she would never talk to him about going down the shore because that was one of his triggers and he didn't like to hear about it because it made him more depressed the memories Adam's the opposite and it's one thing that you can think about when you're getting involved in this life. Does your loved one want to talk about that stuff? Does it make them live vicariously? That's Adam. Or are there topics that they would like to avoid? Like this tattoo guy wanted to avoid talking about vacations and going to the beach and down the shore. It was too painful for him. While he was living on Peter Beach. There is a little slang for you. They were talking about how even though they tanned so much and kind of weathered their skin, he looked so young for his age. And he says back to her, that's because of the jail preserves. And she said, what is jail preserves? And he said, well, what do you think I mean? And she said, I don't know. Is there some sort of jelly that you eat that keeps you young that you guys make in there? And he probably fell off of his bunk laughing. Well, he wasn't in his bunk on the phone. He probably fell out of the little phone booth laughing, right? And he's like, oh my God, before I even answer this for you, I need you to ask the wing nut and see what she says. So she starts laughing when she asks me. She's like, I had the exact same reaction. I don't know anything about this jelly. So when he calls and within the next maybe 10 minutes, she's like, she says the same thing. What, what is this jail jelly? Is it lime flavored? We don't know. And he starts laughing all over again. He said, no, jail preserves you. You don't have the same kind of stress that you have on the outside when you're in prison. You don't have to worry about keeping a roof over your head. You don't have to worry about paying bills. You don't have to worry about your where your next paycheck is coming from. So there's a lot of stuff in here that preserves you. You're not on the cell phone all the time getting that blue light. You're not around Wi-Fi signal all the time. You're not in front of a computer with 17 tabs open and IM box going, your phone ringing at the same time, text messages coming through all going on do 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 overstimulating yourself tons of blue light being absorbed all at once so you're aging you're aging you're aging all of the time jail sort of slows that down before anybody comes at me there is a lot of stress inside of prison there is a lot of stress inside of prison i am not taking that away from them it's a different type of stress but a lot of people who have served a lot of time really do look a lot 
younger than what their age actually is. And there you have it, my friends, is jail jelly. So recently when I went to go get a peel on my face because your girl does anything to shave off a couple of years, Adam thinks I'm crazy because I'm always trying the latest, greatest, newest fad technique. I was telling him, I said, oh, even though I know you would never do it because you think I'm crazy with all of this stuff, but would you ever just come with me so I don't have to go by myself when I do these kinds of things? And he said, you know, he said I could really go for a peel. I really wouldn't mind shedding all of these years of prison off of me. I wouldn't mind getting that kind of washed off, flaked off, shed off and start from scratch. I know there's jail jelly, but I feel like it's starting to take a toll and wear on me. And that's what jarred the memory of Jail Jelly. And to this day, we still laugh about it. I'm like, who is that guy? That woman is so much older than him. Like, what's that all about? And he's like, it's the Jail Jelly. You guys heard me at the end of my other video last time where I added into the bloopers. If you guys don't watch my videos to the end, by the way, at the end, when I put that little card up that shows videos and subscribe, I always have my bloopers there. I don't even have all my bloopers because sometimes there's not enough time. I'm always tripping over my words, blah, blah, blah. But in the last video that I did about the day in the life during lockdown, I added at the end to that, we were having a conversation and I said, I don't want to wait six months or a year to see you. What if I look really old? I was just joking, but halfway being an insecure girl, but not really. And he said something like, you can never look old. You're, oh, you always look beautiful is what he said. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And some of you guys thought that I was talking about him coming home and getting out, which I really wasn't. I was talking about the next time I go to visit him because neither of us know when that'll be for reasons that I think I've alluded to before, but I can make a whole video about that as well. I have no idea how I just spoke for 23 minutes about jail jelly and how jail preserves you. And I am sorry. Let's see if I could cut this down to like half of that. That would be amazing. But there it is. What do you guys think? Have you had experience with jail preserving people? Does your loved one who's incarcerated or if you've been incarcerated, do you notice that? Do you notice that they look a lot younger than their age? Have you ever spoken about it? I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments below. If you don't have a loved one who's incarcerated, you don't have any kind of ties to prison or prison wife life, I would love to know if you think that I'm crazy. I'd love to know your thoughts on this, honestly. Oh, and by the way, I'm wearing my free Adam shirt. Available at, I don't know where. I will put the link. I have so many different sporadic things all over the place. But now that we hit 10K, I believe I should get a merch shelf underneath my videos soon. It's so cool because I'm just so excited every time a new feature is unlocked for us. So just today I saw that we got stories. I'm like, yay, go us, go team rock stars, R-O slash stars. I think that's what we're going to call ourselves. I think it was Kelly or Jody that called me that. And I think it's adorable. So if you guys are into it, team rock stars, just talked about how this video is way too long and here I go, I'm just going, going, going. This is what happens when you give me coffee, wind me up and you let me go. I'll try to add this to the merch shelf when I get it, but I'll also put the link. I will start making stories because that's fun. You guys keep staying strong, keep loving strong, keep supporting one another through this journey because you're one day closer to it all being behind you and Lord knows Adam and I are too. Lots of love from my heart and this cutie's, this little cutie, big cutie's heart to all of yours. I'll see you beautiful ladies and gentlemen in the next one. Bye guys. Accidentally called them by their arena. Re